Hey everyone, Eric here, the director of Exhibits for Curiosity, and we're back in the workshop. But today, I do not have a build for us. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're gonna take a close look at a curious object. Now, have any of you ever played with a gyroscope before? They are a fascinating example of physical forces. And so today we're gonna to take a look at a gyroscope, but not just any gyroscope. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this navigational gyroscope from a B-25 Mitchell aircraft. Now this is a fascinating example of how physical forces are used for a very important safety application. And did you know that navigational gyros have been used on aircraft for more than a hundred years? It's fascinating to think that this technology is still being used today in modern aircraft. Before we head over to the work table and take a closer look at this, I want to remind you that if you like this video, please help us keep creating ways to experience Curiosity at home with a donation today at curiosity.org. So let's head over there and take a close look at this. Here it is. Isn't this great? Now from the outside, it's fairly nondescript. There's this black metal housing and some various labels. This one's kind of neat. You can see here on the side, this little plate that's riveted on. It says line of flight with some arrows. Pretty interesting. And then on this side, there's sort of a data plate with some numbers, serial number, model number, the manufacturer. Happens to be Honeywell was the manufacturer of this gyroscope. And on the top, this big warning label says, do not handle gyro for 15 minutes after disconnecting power. We have to assume there were some sort of capacitors or something that held a, a significant enough electrical charge inside that there would have been some risk to someone who might have been servicing this piece of equipment. But let's take this housing off. There's four little screw uh, hold downs here that I've loosened, so. Let's remove the housing and see what the inside looks like. Now there's a seal, a gasket. Inside a B-25 aircraft probably would have been a bit of a hostile environment. They're, you know, non-pressurized cabin and um, a lot of opportunities for condensation, moisture, things like that to harm a sensitive instrument. So, so here we have it. Now very free spinning inside this central cast metal housing is the gyroscope itself. You can just see it, a silvery disc through these little holes in this housing. And it's being supported by this structure. These are called gimbals. These support structures allow the gyro to remain fixed in its position as the aircraft tilts and moves. And that's an important aspect of how gyroscopes work and how they use them for navigation, which we'll talk about. So how do these things work? Well, let's take a look at a little model that I've prepared and let's talk about that. So how is a gyroscope actually used to navigate or stabilize an aircraft? As I mentioned, the first practical demonstration of a stabilization gyro was done more than a hundred years ago. And this example from our B-25 is actually from the 1940s. So this has been around for a while, but the heart of a gyroscope is essentially a spinning weighted disc. In the case of my little cardboard model here, that's represented by this cardboard disc. So as the disc spins up, gyroscopic forces are generated. And what that ends up acting like is that this spinning disc wants to stay fixed in space relative to its axis. So how do you keep that spinning disc, which is used as a reference for the instrumentation, fixed in space when the aircraft is moving all around? Well, they do it through these gimbals, which are special supports that hold the gyroscopic disc. They're usually a, a couple of rings, so they call them gimbal rings. Now the way those work is like this. If my fingers were one of the gimbal supports, the aircraft could move side to side, but the disc would remain fixed. And again, the ring in this axis could move this way while the disc remains fixed. Now there's an additional force generated from a gyroscopic system. It's actually the combination of two different forces and it's called precession. And it can actually lead to some problems in 
aeronautical instrumentation that need correction. Now, precession. What is that? Precession is actually the combination of two forces that are inherent in a gyroscopic system. So it works like this. As the disc is rotating rapidly, you're generating a force called torque. Now the torque is actually traveling in this direction, in the direction of the rotation of the disc. But the faster that disc rotates, you're also generating something called angular momentum. And the angular momentum actually grows in force the faster the disc is spinning. The faster it goes, the more the angular momentum grows. And it is traveling in this direction. So you're creating a greater angular momentum force in that direction. Torque going this way, angular momentum going that way, and the two combine to create precession, which means the entire system rotates in this direction slowly. Now, again, that's called precession, and for aeronautical instrumentation, it actually results in drift, which means the instruments have to be corrected periodically. That correction is usually done in modern aircraft by electronic systems, but they also have a manual correction as well. Now the pilot themselves can actually correct the drift with a small knob near the instrument. So if it's an artificial horizon or a heading indicator or what have you, you'll see a small knob that the pilot can twist to make that correction. And they might do this as often as every 15 minutes actually. So that's procession. Now you've probably experienced gyroscopic forces and precession if you've ever ridden a bicycle. It's believed that these two forces are the primary reasons that a bicycle remains stable. Have you ever seen someone roll a bicycle without a rider and it stays upright for a period of time? And then eventually as it slows down, it'll fall over. Well, precession and gyroscopic effect are believed to be the main reasons that happens. The gyroscopic effect is generated by the spinning front wheel, and again, as I mentioned, that rotation results in the gyroscope wanting to remain fixed in space. So you get a stable bicycle. The precession actually gives you a slight automatic steering correction, and that occurs in a bicycle because the steering axis is actually behind the rotational axis of the front wheel. Pretty interesting. Now let's put my little cardboard model away and take a look at the fascinating engineering that is inside this navigational gyroscope one more time. Now right inside here, that's our gyroscope as I mentioned. You can see how free moving it is. I can give it a little spin with my pointer here. So that's our weighted disc. And this ring, I'm actually not sure what some of this is inside here. I have this feeling with these partial gear teeth, maybe this was something, some sort of part of an automated system to counteract the procession. But again, I don't exactly know. It's just so fascinating to think that this technology, as we see it here, is more than 70 years old. And the base technology, as I mentioned, is more than a hundred years old. So there you have it, gyroscopes. Pretty fascinating technology and a pretty interesting application of physical forces. Thanks for taking a little bit of time to take a look at this curious object with me and a very historic object as well. So thanks again for watching and please help us to keep creating science exhibits and zoo programs you can enjoy at home with a donation today at curiosity.org. We'll see you again.